Good morning and welcome to the Elevate Renatus team call. This is your host, Keely Austin. And as of right now, we have 51 participants on the line. Make sure that you reach out to your team and get people invited to these calls. And um, we don't want to, well, we want to make sure that no one's missing out on these amazing trainings in the morning. This is a really, really great way to start your day. Our trainer today is Dane Clark. Dane, before Renatus, he was working two jobs. He was working for Apple and he was also a roofer. He was uh, kind of shy and he was working in the back at Apple. So he wasn't one of the people that would come out and greet you. He was in the back. And as a roofer with fair skin and red hair, as you can see, was not his cup of tea to be in the sun all day. Uh, he ended up being a roofer because his dad was a roofer. At the time, he was barely making ends meet. So he started to look for other income opportunities and he ended up finding Renatus. He plugged into the Renatus system, listened to his mentors, applied velocity banking to pay down debt, and then he used that as leverage for a down payment on a duplex. He lived in one side and rented off the other. Fast forward to today, Dane has raised over six million and I know that he actually just hit the $8 million mark. So he's raised over $8 million from investors to lend on various real estate transactions. The secret to that is consistency and frequency. He has grown his team. He is recognized by our CEO, Bob Snyder, as a key leader, and he is on the PIT team as a President's Advisory Council member in training. And we're very fortunate to have him as our trainer today. I'm excited what you have to share. Good morning, Dane. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for that introduction. And good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited to hear. I want to I hear two things from everybody today. And if you're new to the call and you've never been on here, then just, just to clue you in, I love hearing from everybody. Everybody that, that is willing to come off of mute, not be so shy, because I was, I was that person. And so my, one of the goals that I have is to help people, you know, and, and guys, it's real. Oh my gosh. I used to call it, um, scared of people syndrome. And, uh, so if you have scared of people syndrome, do what you know you need to do, come off a of mute and share. So the, so I want to hear two things from everybody today. One is the usual. How many people did you have? in a meeting between today and, and a week ago today. And secondly, in five words or less, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? And, and I would love to hear, or, or you can even just tell us what you're grateful for. So five words or less, what are you doing? Or what are you grateful for, for Thanksgiving? So I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull up my own guests. Let's see, one, Two, three. Okay. All right. I had five one on ones in the last seven days. All right, let's look at this. Esther, three, closed the combo yesterday. Congratulations. That's super exciting. Good job. Is this your first one or have you done a, a couple of these already? Would love to hear back. Had three people talk to, talking to, <laughs> I love it, Tyler. Talking to people on Thanksgiving, yes. And if you guys have ever heard my one-liner uh, that has led me to hundreds of thousands of dollars in real estate in both in both real estate deals as well as in closing combos is, hey, have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? And uh, it's, it's my favorite. I learned that one ever since EMT and I stuck with it because my, my mind was like, you know what? Instead of trying to memorize a bunch of things, how I just memorize one and see where it goes? Because a lot of people are, uh, a lot of people have a relationship to that and you just figure it out. So. Uh, cool. So Umer had five. Congratulations, brother. You are the man. Um, let's see. Eating Korean braised short ribs with the family. That would be cool. A, a nice little twist on uh, some of your standard turkey. 
Cecilia had 16, had a, oh, you guys had an intensive and you had 16 people in Chris Albin's intensive. That is amazing. Great job. Uh, Allison had one great job. Wonderful. Uh, Jody, two invites, both no shows, throwing a band, throwing band of signs up tomorrow. Um, cool. Jody, if you uh, would like to reach out to me, I have, I could, Utah actually out, outlawed, um, they outlawed band assigned, but I actually have a script that you, that I used for making my first hundred thousand uh, dollars in Renatus actually. If you would like that script, then reach out to me on like Facebook Messenger or something like that, and I'll shoot that over to you if, if you're interested. Um, let's see, congrats, congrats. Allison Marshall has, is, is meeting with family. One guest, grateful for these calls. Thank you so much. I'm spending Thanksgiving with Bill and Sherry Credibon. Ooh, that'll be fun. A yummy vegan dinner. That'll be really, really cool. Uh, Sherry, grateful that I'll be spending time with family. Um, oh, and one, and signed up for essentials. Awesome, awesome. Grateful for me. Oh, thank you so much, Anne. I appreciate you. Uh, five words left. <laughs> oh, Tyler, I love you. Um, <laughs> let's see. Esther, one combo after five star. Great. Oh, so this will be your first $10,000. My congratulations. That is always a fun day. I always imagine, um, you know, my, or, my, I remember myself, but I always imagine my my students and, and people that follow me, that when, when they have that very first $10,000 check, I kind of picture it like this, where, where you, you already go into your login and you signed up for a direct deposit, so they're just gonna send it right to your bank account and, and payday comes every Tuesday and Friday. And so Tuesday morning or whatever day it's gonna be, you, you, you pull out your phone and you, you refresh the bank account, you refresh the bank account, you're looking at the phone and, and it's not there. And so, and so you go about, you know, you, you try to eat breakfast and you try to do normal things in the day and go and maybe go to work. And then you're refreshing the bank account, refreshing the bank account, and then bam, $10,000 even. A one with a, a zero, a comma, three more zeros and a point zero zero. So we're talking five zeros after this baby shows up in your bank account. And for some people, that is the first time that that amount of money has ever entered their account. I know that was, that was the case for myself. I had never seen that money, that amount of money enter my bank account at one time in my life. I mean, let alone in the, in like a six month period in my lifetime, that was a very, I mean, that was a changing moment in my life. So congratulations. For jumping on there. Let's see. We got more people here. Amy had 10 for one one Awesome. We're not as family time. Good job. Let's see. Uh, Sam, Samania, no, Samina, Samina Carl Godfrey, uh, five new meetings on the road driving to, for Thanksgiving, heading to Arizona, warm weather. Hey, I'll join you down there. We're heading down there too. It's, it's freaking cold up here in Utah and snowing. So we'll be heading down that way. Um, let's see. Uh, to say, uh, it again. Oh, okay. That was just a total Wednesday, Wednesday. I totally forgot my bad, but great job. Either way, 16 is a great number. Um, let's see. Love those days. Chuck had one. Congratulations, brother out of town. So couldn't bring people this week. Cool. Well, thank you all for sharing. Let me go ahead and, sh and just start the screen share here. And, uh, I'm, I just realized I, I forgot to add. Um, or create the new mastermind. So let me do that really, really fast. And we'll call this uh, November 27 mastermind. Cool. Well, today I've, I've had a, I had, I, I always have things weighing on my mind during the week. And I, and it's funny, sometimes in midweek or, or in, in this case at 1am in the morning, it just like hits me and it's like, Oh my gosh, I have to talk about this on, the morning call with everybody. So um, my, my gratitude, uh, if, if you guys will let me just take a moment here, um, I wanna express, express a huge gratitude to Keely for running these morning calls. She is incredible. I mean, I, I am so grateful 
that she jumps on here. Every, I, I think she does this Monday through Thursday, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And she deals with my, my shenanigans by texting her at one in the morning saying, Hey, if you haven't already scheduled the call to go out, go ahead and write this. And, 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 uh, some, and literally I send that to her at one in the morning. I hope she was not, I was hope she was, I hope she was sleeping and that didn't wake her up. But, but regardless, I'm, I'm super grateful that she does this for us and handles this. Um, a couple other things that I'm grateful for, you know, I am so grateful that Renatus and, and lately I've been saying that Renatus found me. I am so grateful that Renatus found me and that I was in a place in my life after going through all the, all the stuff. I was at a place in my life that one, I, I could even drum up $20,000, but that I had a hope. I, I had the opportunity to do the four pillars presentation yesterday and here in Utah, we usually do it on Thursday. And so when we switch it to Tuesday, we usually have a very, very small group. And so I only had four people that I was doing a presentation to. And I said, I basically said, you know what, guys, how about I just scrap my usual presentation when we have, when we fill the room with 50 to a hundred people. And how about I just customize this to you guys? And, and and so I got to know each, each of those four people fairly well and, and in regards to what their, their goals are in real estate. And there was a wide range. I mean, people that were just getting started and like myself, never done any real estate before, but have, have high hopes. And some people had already flipped like six homes, but they're, they're hitting a ceiling of, of learning how to get deeper discounts and how to start holding them as rentals and, and just, just grow. And so, and so we had a range of people in there and it was really fun to sit and customize the, you know, my, my little presentation. And I still use, you know, the PowerPoint, but I was just skipping around and we, we, we were literally just in the raw. And it was crazy because afterwards, every single one of those people, all four of them, every single one of those people came up and were just like, Oh my goodness, this, is exactly what I have been looking for. And, and one, I mean, one of the ladies, her, her backstory was, was that somebody in her life had just passed away. It wasn't even a family member, but because of, of how good of a friend they had been to this gentleman, he willed his house to them. I mean, it was the only possession that he had of, of that was worth anything. And, and when he passed away, he said, he basically said, Hey guys, you get my house. And so they just inherited this ugly home and it has a mortgage payment on it. So an ugly home and a mortgage payment is not usually like the best gift in the world because it's going to take work and people don't want to, people don't know what to do with that. And, and they've been struggling to make the payments and, and so on and so forth. But anyway, so we go through this presentation and, and each one of them come up to me afterwards and are just like, Oh my gosh this is exactly what I needed. And, and, uh, and sometimes we all like to go to dinner afterwards. And so we all go to Chile and, and some of the guests came with us and stuff. And, and the whole time she, she just, she was blown away. She could not fathom the, the information that we shared with her for just a couple hours, even on a, on a Tuesday night before Thanksgiving was about to change her life. And I, I sat there and I, I, I assured her, hey, this is normal. I remember going through this myself. <laughs> and so if you guys even remember, the first time you ever saw Renata and the people behind it that are running this ship, be grateful for those moments. Whether you've already surmounted any amount of success or you're on your way, be grateful that you're on your way at least. And, and, uh, so I am, I am so grateful. I mean, it was a huge shift in my life from where I was going. So thank you, Bob Snyder, especially. Okay. So let's talk about this. I'm very excited to share, oops, very excited to share some cool things that I've, I've changed up when I sit down with people. Um, and it's funny because I've gone in this like cycle, I feel like, where when I was new, 
in Renanus and I hadn't really done much yet. And I started, I started building up the courage and saying, I'm going to do my own one-on-ones. I'm going to do my own one-on-ones. I'm going to do my own closings. Like I'm not going to rely on anybody else. Like I'm going to become, I'm going to develop the skill myself so that I can do this. And, uh, and it was funny though, because before I had that, before I had that drive to do my own one-on-ones, I always felt like, so, so here, let me, let me kind of draw my little timeline here. So I always felt like when I was at credibility or maybe I should do this, if I should say my credibility, credibility, um, I always felt like when my credibility was, was at zero and I was just getting started and not re- didn't really have any credibility. Let me actually change colors for that. I didn't have any credibility. I, I didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel like I could be the guy that would go and do one-on-ones. And so I felt like before I could do one-on-ones, I thought that I needed to surmount to some kind of, of experience and some kind of, uh, something that I could be like, look at what it did, you know? And so, and so that was like one of the goals that I had. And, and so, um, I started and it was funny because I, I, it wasn't coming fast enough. Like the money, the money wasn't coming fast enough in my, in the credibility that I was hoping for. You know, I was working my butt off and trying to do deals and get stuff done and get paid, but I, I just hadn't done it yet. And I was like, I mean, like, man, I, I can't wait. I need money today. I need money yesterday. Like my wife just had a baby and, and I mean, I'm the only one working in our home. And so she's staying home with the kids and that was our goal. And so I, I, I just, I developed this mindset that I had to be up here in credibility and be, be a master real estate investor before I could start doing my own one-on-ones. And so it was funny because when I had that mindset, it stopped me from, from being, you know, having confidence. And so, and, and you guys have heard me this before about confidence where it was funny because after, um, after I started having a little bit of credibility, I didn't feel any different. I didn't feel more credible. I didn't feel more successful. I didn't feel, and, and so I learned it was a mindset. And so I'm not, I don't want to talk about that today because because we're going to get into something else. I just want to set some groundwork groundwork here. But essentially, I learned okay, you know what? Credibility is knowledge. I know how to do this. I've seen other people do this. I have heard stories upon stories upon stories of people in Renatus, and that was one of the one of the biggest impacts on me was going to a national conference with in, in Renata and they do, they do this thing. And I don't want to spoil it for anybody who's never been to a national conference yet, but they do this thing for an hour. It takes a whole hour to just let people walk across the stage, spend 20 seconds and talk about how long they've been in Renata. Give it, you know, give us their name, where they from, how long you've been in Renata and how many deals have you done? And it took us an hour for people to go across the stage and every 15 to 20 seconds, people rattling off the, the things that they had done. And so after seeing that at, at the national conference and, and obviously all the other trainings, but, but, oh my goodness, that was such an impact. Anyway, so, so in my story here, I learned that knowledge was my credibility. If I just knew a little bit more than the person that I'm talking to, whether I had experience or not, knowledge was that credibility. So I, I decided to change my mindset and say, you know what, you have enough credibility to go and do this. And so I, I start doing my own one-on-one, even though my, my credibility wasn't as high. And then I started building, it was crazy. That's when things started curving upward. And so I, I have this upward curve. And so then in my one-on-ones, I, I talk about me, 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 and, and me, and, he, and here's what I've done, and here's me, and here's me, and 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 so it's crazy. Now that, now that I've done over, I can't even remember, but over 55 deals and, and growing, I'm in, in, in on 20 deals right now, 
And the credibility just is it's starting to go up, right? Building these systems that I, I spend less than 10 hours a week and running this multi-million dollar real estate portfolio. It's crazy because now my mindset is starting to shift backwards, I feel like, to, to what really works. Because, I mean, yeah, some people want to hear about your success. But if you're just talking about me, 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 and here's what I've done, and here's what I've done, right? Here's what I've done. People, it doesn't work as, as well as, let me tell you about, let me tell you about her that did this against, I mean, against all odds. Let me tell you about this, this lady, this girl, this woman that did this. Let me tell you about him. Let me tell you about them that did this. So I find, I've been finding in my, in my one-on-ones, I am telling more of other people's stories than I'm telling of myself. And yeah, I give a little bit of, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it works, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm enjoying life because of Renata's, yes. But, but the key is that I'm talking about other people now in my one-on-ones. And so in every single one-on-one I do, I try to tell at least two to four other people's stories of what of what other people are doing. And so I have, I've developed this, like, I don't know if if I want to say infatuation, but, but let's just go with, let's just go with it. I've developed this infatuation with other people's Renata's story and what they are doing and where they came from and, and what, what it has changed in their life, whether they're still down here and still surmounting to something or whether they're up here and they're doing, you know, they're doing a bunch of of deals already, you know, whatever it is, I, I've loved hearing because it just gives me more ammo to sit down and help other people relate to relate to each, each and every one of the stories that I'll share, not just mine. Right. And so, because some people might not relate to me, but they write, they might relate to her, they might relate to him or, or, uh, you know, or them or whoever. Okay. And so let me share with you guys how I've been tweaking my, my one-on-one. Okay. And so if you'll, if you'll uh, roll with me here, I'll, I'm actually going to go through this as if, uh, you know, as I'm go, as I'm doing a one-on-one and just give you guys a snapshot, I'm going to try and speed it up just a little bit. Cause I know we've got, we're short on time, but, um, but I want to give you this skeleton of those little t- tweaks um, that I've changed. So the first thing that I like to do, is sit down and ask people um, and ask them about their future selves. And so I say, you know what, this is a lifetime membership, but the first year is the most important. The first, I mean, the first year is going to, is, is going to be the one that when you focus for one entire year on a regular basis towards your real estate business, that is what is going to make the difference. Okay? And so if you do that for that first year, I mean, look at every study, look at every case study of every single person who went into Renata. When they focus for an entire year, things changed. And when they didn't give up, when they got over their own stupid um, negative self-talk, when they, and, and they focused for a year, um, they, they surmounted to reaching some of their goals. And so, so for you, my question is this, if we were to sit down one year from today, right? And, and I even want you guys to think through this as, as I say this, but, but imagine me and you sitting down one year from today and we're having a throwback where just like, oh my gosh, remember a year ago when, and usually, and literally I say things that other, that, that somebody else has said, remember when, you know, you were thinking this and and remember when, when this happened and remember when this was going on in your life, right? Just just things that I'm talking to people about and asking them questions. Okay. And so I say, all right, so, so here we are a year from now and you are telling me that working together in Renata has been one of the best decisions that you have ever made because 
what happened? And so I get them to tell me that as if it already happened. And I'll just start listening things down. Okay, so I want to give you a little bit of the science behind this, though, because there's actually some science that goes that goes behind this. And so I'll, I'll say, all right, you know, for, and I, I write vision up here. And I say, all right, so we're talking and you're telling me, dude, working together in, in Renatus has been one of the best decisions I've ever made because what happened? And tell me as though it already happened. And so they list off something. And then, I, and then usually it's a little bit shallow and they just, bam, just comes right from their brain. And they just say, oh, this. And I say, all right, why do you want this? And then they lift it off. Why do you want that? Why, like, again, why else do you want this? Yeah, so, so here's, here's the thing that happened that they tell me. And I say, why do you want that? And I say, why else do you want that? And say, give me another reason why you want that. Why else? And, and I just start going. And so here's what happens to the brain when you start asking why the thing and why else and why else and why else. And sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll go after a couple different things that they'll tell me. And then I'll, I'll pick one of the things. But anyway, so as we start going, why, 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 why? When, when they reach a point where they have to stop and think, you have, you have gotten past the brain, essentially. Because the brain just has their rattled off answers, that, that, you know, the first thing that comes to their mind. As soon as they have to stop and think for just a moment, now you start getting into the heart. You start getting into the things of why they really want these things. So why else? And sometimes I'll be really, really careful doing this in the first one-on-one -on -one. Because you have to you have to be an extremely good rapport with somebody to to really get deep like this. Sometimes I'll still just use these things, and then the second time we meet, you know, when we're getting ready to put credit cards in or whatever, then I'll come back to this. Because literally, prepare yourself now. When you start getting down to this moment after they have to stop and think, people, I mean, grown men, have wept in front of me like in, in utter tears because of the reasons that I pull out of them of why they want this thing. And usually it's, you know, I want to pay off my debt or I want, I want to, you know, I want to do a real estate deal or, or I want, uh, you know, to own a rental property or I want, uh, my, you know, I don't get this one super often actually, but I want my dream car or I want to, I want to buy my first house for my, my wife and I, my family, or I want, okay. So the, I mean, all just things that I, I hear on a regular basis. And literally people have wept because you start pulling out of them the deep rooted reasons of why they want what they want. And what does it mean for them? Like what, what does it mean for you to achieve, you know, some of these goals? And so, so that's what I like to do in the beginning. And depending on how, how, what, what kind of rapport uh, I'm in with the person will depend on how deep we go. But for everybody, you know, especially after they've purchased, that I'll do this with them. And, and we'll get deep rooted reasons as to why they want it, why they need it, why they deserve it. And what does it mean for them if they achieve this? Okay. And it's usually not what you would think. It's usually not what you would think. Um, and so, um, okay, moving on. So I, I, I get those things, right? And I'll, sometimes I won't have the whys down here, but I'll just have, I'll just have you know, a list of, of surface things. And that's totally okay because you're building the rapport with this person. And so I asked him a couple of things that, that would make them, this is, the best, this is the best decision I ever made because this happened, this happened, this happened. And I say, cool. So for most people, 
this has to start as a side hustle. And I do, I say this because um, if I talk, if I talk afterwards, this is one of the things that people come up with as an excuse. Oh, I don't have enough time. So I dude, before I even give them any value, I get this from them because then they can't go back and be like, oh, well, I actually don't have time. I get them to tell me how much time they have before we even start, because that's one of the things that they, they will tell themselves that they don't have. Oh, I don't have time to do this. And so I'll say, all right, for most people, this always starts as a, as a side hustle. And for a lot of people, it will stay as a side hustle. So let me ask you this. If you started making plenty of money in real estate, would you go full-time or would you say, would you keep it as a, a side hustle? You know, so you, you kind of future pace them again um, and, and get an idea of where they want to go. And I say, cool. So, for, but for right now, whether they tell me part-time, full-time, they're right. Okay. Whatever they want, that's their right. That's what they, that's what they want. And that's what they can have in real estate. And so then I'll say, all right. So, so obviously for now, this is going to start as a side hustle because you still got to put food on the table as you're building your real estate business. So, so answer me this for right now, how many hours per week do you feel that you could consistently put in into reaching these goals? Okay? And so I attach the, I attach the time that they're going to spend to reaching their goals, which again, causes them to feel like, okay, this is real. This is getting real right now. Like I am going to start working towards these things that I really want, but I don't have right now. And so I always get them to say something. And most of the time they're very honest. And they say, you know what? I've got, like, I just had somebody yesterday say eight to 10 hours. And I've had, I've had people give me a range from five to 40, I feel like. Um, but even the people that say, oh, I could put 40 hours. And I say, cool, well, we're still going to start you around 10 to 15 because it has to start as a side hustle. Uh, uh, because you still got to put food on the table, you know, like you still, you're not going to go, you're not going to start doing this and, and wake up tomorrow with a million dollar bill under your pillow and just be like, congratulations. Like you did it. I'm like, no, this is going to be work and this is going to take time. Okay. Yeah. We will speed it up. And that's, that's really what the mentorship of, of everything that, that comes along with Renata you know, all the classes, the communities, the 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 one on one coaching, the the people, right? That is gonna speed up any other system that you try to join into if you do it right. Okay. And so I get the side hustle, commitment, and then this is what I do. I like to sit down and I and I like to tell a story. Yeah, okay? and I and I like to actually bust out somebody else's story of a real estate deal and usually that story i already know which story i'm going to tell based on the things that they tell me here and and this is why i say i've been getting so like in, intrigued and in hearing other people's stories because the more stories i hear from other people the more stories i can bust out and be like hey if this is going to relate to you and this is going to help you get into a, a, you know, move yourself into a position to, to be like, holy crap, I could do that. I could get into that. Okay. And so I tell a story and, and I usually like to tell a story about a deal that somebody did or somebody is doing. And so if I just rattle off, you know, and let's just use a fix and flip as an example here. And so I tell a story about somebody else, um, you know, where they purchased, you know, the purchase price of that home their, their buying costs of that home, their holding costs of that home, the, uh, let's see, what am I missing here? The rehab costs of this property, and then the selling costs at the end of the day of, of paying the realtor and so on and so forth, and then the ARV. Um, and so by, you know, subtracting basically all these numbers and then adding this number, and then their net profit of the deal. And so I'll share, you know, just a little, and then I won't take a ton of time, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll talk about the deal and, and then, you know, so I'll talk about, yeah, this is what they did and here's it, you know, made and, and man, they came from, 
a really similar place as yourself, <laughs> essentially is what I'm saying, or, or the reason I bring up this story um, and just relate it to them. But then here's what I do. So now I've got this deal and, and I'll, always, I'll always try and remember to put example at the deal here. Um, and so I'll tell them, you know, this, blah, 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 and then I do this and I like to move this over and say, so let me share with you how, how this person went from day one in starting with Renatus to picking up and moving themselves into position to get paid on this deal. Yeah. And so then they're like, cool. And now they're just like listening because they see a real, real life example that nobody can argue with. This is crazy stories. Nobody can argue with the story ever. You ever have a heckler tell a story and, and they, they will never be like, Oh, that's not true. But like, are you kidding me? You think I would lie about that? Like, are you openly telling me that I'm a liar? You know, and, and nobody's going to be like, yes, <laughs> you're, a, you're a liar. No. You're like, all right, cool. Well, let's go look at settlement statements then. Like, oh, you know, and, and by that time though, somebody that's a heckler, they are just justifying in their own mind why they can't do this. And so they have to justify and blame outwardly and say, that's not true. You know, they're just not believers yet in themselves. That's the only reason somebody would ever, would ever do something like that. Just remember that um, the next time somebody turns you down or whatever. Okay. So then I tell them this. So, so there's three phases to this. Yeah. So phase one, phase two, phase three. And, and from day one, this is what that person did. Right. And this is what I did. You know, I, I relate myself to this. I relate them. I'm basically just like say, Hey, this is like a well-known thing. Like this is a thing inside of Renata. Okay. This three, these three phases to reaching your first deal. And so, and then I just basically just start explaining the essentials. And I just talk about, so in the beginning of, of like the four pillars, for example, like you'll start learning the, you know, you'll start learning about taxes. And, and a lot of you have probably already heard this at this point, but, but we just go through, you know, essentially the learning paths, right? So taxes, um, if you're, uh, let's see, sorry, banking, taxes and banking. And if you're going to do any banking, then you're going to need to know how credit works. Um, let's see, taxes, banking, uh, learning how to structure business business and and you know your legal and and how you know how things work there and and a lot of the first things and, and i'll see and and then in towards the beginning you're going to want to learn your finding technique how you how you want to find deals and most people are going to do one of three things they're either going to go and diy where they hire or, or they go and and find a motivated seller by probates or foreclosure or divorce or, or uh, tired landlords or you know, whatever. And so there's multiple ways to go where you go and seek out the homeowner and ask them if, they, if you can buy their home. If it's already for sale, you just say, here's how much I'll pay for it. If it's not for sale, you'll say, hey, would you be interested in selling it? I'm interested in buying. Okay. And so there's either DIY or you're going to hire somebody. There's multiple ways to do that. And, and you'll learn about that in the essentials. And, and so, you know, we're talking wholesalers and bird dogs and, and, uh, and realtors and, and um, uh, referral or sorry, referrals is a whole another one. And, or you're going to start setting up referrals. Okay? And so here's some good, uh, here's some good opportunities to tell stories as well. Whether you tell, this story of the deal we already you already brought up or you tell somebody else's story um but and and you'll kind of get an idea of what the person is going to be interested in doing themselves okay if if, if they already have uh, things lined up then they might hire somebody if they don't then they might just do it themselves okay and everybody does this one everybody will start putting themselves in in place in a place to start getting referrals okay so this one's, this one's mandatory, I basically say, but at the same time that you are building, oh, you know what? I forgot something. I do like to talk about the five currencies in the midst of this currencies of time, 
is the most important. Knowledge comes second. Because if you if you know what you know, knowledge. If you know what you know, you can you can drop yourself. Knowledge is the one that you can drop yourself in any city, any state of this nation, and you could start making money. Okay. And so I put knowledge before relationships. And especially, I mean, I could tell stories of of people who knew somebody, but just because that, you know, they didn't have enough knowledge that, you know, they basically put, they put relationship above knowledge of, of knowing somebody, it got them into trouble and they lost money. I mean, I, I heard a story last week of somebody who was interested in real estate. They trusted a relationship above their own knowledge because they didn't have it and they lost money on the deal. And so I put knowledge above relationships. And then I say, um, I say credit, but really I mean credibility because a FICO score, credibility, a FICO score is really just a number to tell the bank how credible the person is uh, of how, of how credible the person is to pay them back. And in the real estate world, if you're going to be creative, then credibility is, is going to be more important than your FICO, right? I've done millions of dollars in real estate and never once used, you know, nobody knows what my credit score is. Yeah. And the last one of course is money. And so I say, we will focus here, you know, here's the time that we're going to invest in this, but that time will be spent doing this. This is where all the money is the right knowledge, the right relationships and building the right credibility with those relationships will allow you to have any amount of money that you desire. And so, and so I share that with them and I say, all right, so here's what we'll focus on first knowledge. Here's what we'll focus on at the same time relationships. And so I say in, in the same note or in the same, in the same phase one, we'll split up your time. Okay. We'll split up your eight hours a week and say, you'll spend some of that time learning knowledge on the front end. It's probably going to be weighted towards more like maybe six or seven hours of knowledge. And then an hour of just, just connecting with people, right? You want to start making friends in real estate. So if you start connecting with peers, other real estate peers in, in real estate, then you are, you are going to hear other people's stories and it's going to give you ideas to be like, holy crap, this is possible. And, and oh my goodness, that is such a good idea. And holy cow, I could totally do that. The more stories you hear, the more you're like, man, I could do that. I've got the resources to do that. Okay. And you're going to, you're going to get, Making connections always leads to more connections in the real estate world. And then more connections always leads to more deals. More deals always leads to more money. Okay? And so just by, just by meeting people, making friends, when you still don't know anything, that, and that's why I say this is like level one of just, just making friends. And so you'll just drop the words like, hey, you ever consider getting involved in real estate investing? Stuff like that. And then, and then, you either get a yes or a no, but you don't know where to go from there. That's totally fine. Be like, cool, me too, man. We should talk about this. Okay. So you just start making connections. And so, um, and, and they don't go anywhere yet, but they might, I mean, you've got, you've got, you've got your five star, you've got, uh, you know, the people in the community. So, so this, this is how you see those, those, uh, those people that have their, you know, and, and let's just call it beginner's luck. So this is where you see beginner's luck because somebody will make a connection and somebody will be like, oh my goodness, holy cow, like this, you know, this is exciting. I want to do this too, man. You know, and so you, you start making those connections. And some of those connections are just going to be your fellow Renata students and people that you meet, you know, in the Facebook groups and the communities and stuff like that, or, or on these calls or whatever. Okay. And so, but yeah, anyway, we're, we're making connections. Step two, and I got to speed this up because we got like eight minutes here. Um, but th this is the, I mean, I think you guys are picking up what I'm putting down here. And so phase two, we, we focus on, and here, let me do blue. We focus on a, um, one path, whether that's fix and flips, rentals, commercial, uh, land development, 
um, um, starting your own bank, buying notes, uh, short sale, you know, whatever it is, we pick one path and we learn everything there is about analyzing those types of properties, finding those types of properties, structuring those types of properties, um, financing those types of properties, creating partnerships for those types of properties. Okay. And so basically everything that it's going to take to do the deal and make money, the next type or the next thing that you'll do inside of phase two, and you'll still will probably be a lot heavier on the knowledge at this point and say, you know, of your eight hours per week, we'll, we'll probably focus like seven hours on just knowledge and maybe one hour in building relationships. The second type of relationship that now this is when it starts to feel real in your path. This is where you're like, all right, let's meet a CPA. Let's meet an attorney. Let's meet a, um, a contractor. Let's meet a realtor. Let's meet a title agent. Let's meet a private lender. Let's meet a private equity partner. Let's meet um, a, a banker. Let's meet an inspector. Let's meet a, uh, um, a sewer scoper, you know, depending on what type of property you, anyway, you guys get the idea, right? All the people that are going to be your professionals in the deal. And you basically have what I like to call the partnership conversation with them. And you basically say, all right, here's what I plan to do. Here's my plan. How can you help me? And if I do this times times 10, in the next few years, would you like to do all 10, you know, or however many, you know, however many deals I'm able to do, do you want to just work together on all these deals? And then you, so you have the, what I call that partnership conversation. I mean, yeah, you're not going to partner partner with them per se, but you're going to use their company um, religiously. And if, and if you don't like them, then you'll find somebody else. Right. And that's the nice thing about real estate is, is it's really easy to fire a, a, an independent contracted company that is serving you and your real estate business and just find somebody else. Okay. Just make sure that you don't pay them before you fire them. Um, and that's a huge key there. But anyway, so now that we've got all the relationships, the only thing we have left to do is go and do it. And so we're going to find deals. We're going to analyze those deals and we're going to make offers. Until we get somebody and, and you'll, you'll pick how you find the deals. You'll pick, uh, you know, obviously which types of deals you're going to analyze and how you, you'll, you'll analyze it and, and you'll make the offer based on how you're going to structure it and finance it and, and part, you know, the relationships that you're building. And so when you get the yes, then it's just a matter of like, Hey, I got one. Hey, I got one. Hey, I got one. Hey, I got one. I got one. I got one. I got one. You can start a group text if you want to. Yes. I always get the person that has the smart aleck comment. Dude, why don't you just start like a group email and send this to everybody? But yeah, anyway, so it's a lot more fun to be like, Hey, I got one. And they get all excited. You'd be like, cool, cool. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. And you say, all right, you know, let's, let's get a sewer scope. Let's get an inspection. Okay. Um, you got the money. Uh, hey, can you get me a title report? Hey, let's run some comparables. Hey, can you get me some bids? Hey, I need an LLC for this deal actually, because I don't have an LLC yet. Right. Hey, I need bookkeeping so we can, I mean, we're going to be buying stuff and I pay taxes or, or not pay taxes and write this stuff off. Okay. And so you call the people. Oh, and you call your friends. You'd be like, Hey guys, I got one. Yeah. And so now, now you're in business. Like now uh, you got all these, all these people. And this is where the real handholding comes from. Like a lot of people want, want just some guy, you know, and I would consider myself just some guy because I don't have a license for like, any, well, I have a driver's license, right? That's it. I don't have a realtor's license to turn it like, yeah, I've done this before, but all I'm going to do is hold your hand and say, call all these people. Okay. Cause they are going to be the ones who hold your hand through those processes of what they do best in their business. They will hold your hand, especially on that first one. Yeah. And so, and so here you are, you're doing, you know, and you're doing your deal and all these people are helping and and uh, and you're you're building experience at this point. 
Because after you do it once, the first time is always the hardest. And the, the, time, the time after that, it, it doesn't become more easy. It doesn't become easier. You just get better. And you know what you're doing now because once you've experienced it, you're just like, cool, all I have to do is copy, paste, rinse and repeat, right? And so I, in my one-on-one, this is how I'm structuring it now in going through. And I talk about these three things first, the vision, the side hustle, five currencies, and here's how we're going to apply the five currencies. And let's, let's go do a deal. So I ask them this question. So once I get to this point, I mean, they're pretty stoked at this point. They're like, holy crap, this makes a lot of sense. And, and so the question I'll ask them is I say, hey, let me ask you a question. So does, does the idea make sense to you? Do you like the idea? And can you see yourself doing this? Okay. And they, I've, I've never yet had a single person say no. And I can say that, I can say that honestly. I have never had anybody say no to that question when I show them this. And then I basically just say, cool. And, and you guys, I think I just went over this a few weeks ago. But, but in, in your Renatus back end, in fact, here, let me show you the path to, to this. You can, either, you can either pull this up yourself or just start listing down these items. But if I go to the Helios, I'm going to log in. And I'm going to go down to the marketing tab. And I'm going to oh, marketing tab and presentations right here. So marketing tab, presentations. Now I'm going to search disclosures. Oh, I misspelled it. Disclosures. And either, I mean, they're both basically the same, but you can either do black and white or the color one. And I think it's page three. Yeah. Page three. Funding options list. Cash or credit. Um, Opening, so funding assessment, opening new credit, essentially. Um, retirement funds, HELOC, which would be like another line of credit, essentially. Private funding, life insurance, UGA. That, and so all, all, and again, you guessed it, funding stories. So your homework is going to be if you don't know somebody who funded their education using one uh, or each of these strategies, your homework is to find someone who used each one of these strategies so you can tell a story. And so I'll just start telling stories. But yeah, have somebody do this, have somebody do this, have somebody do this, 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 all these different things. And then as I'm listing these things, so, so you know, we cash credit, Existing funding assessment, so in essence, getting new credit. Whoops, funding assessment. Anyway, you guys get it. Funding assessment. Um, let me make sure I get the right order here. Funding assessment, um, retirement funds. Uh, key lock, which basically is like opening up new credit as well. I kind of, I kind of tap that one in there. Private funding, life insurance. life insurance, and UGA. And so as I'm going through this and telling different stories, I'll be asking them, like, you know, would this be a possibility? And so I'll start circling things that they tell me, like, oh, yeah, like, I could totally, I could pro totally do, like, these things. Yeah, my credit's not so good, you know, whatever. So, so you know, maybe, not, not, you know, uh, they get, I mean, they get to decide, right? You, we are not credit experts. We are not credit consultants. We're none of that. They decide which ones they want to do. And if you're doing this for the first time, I mean, literally just read these things and just go through um, and, and read these things. And, uh, and they're like, hey, does that sound like, you know, but, and after you've done it a few times, then you can just spew them off and tell your story, okay? And then, and then I just give them homework and say, cool. So our homework from here, 
is, and I know we're over on time, but I just want to make sure I finish this recording um, complete. I say, all right, so the next steps from here are going to be step one, we're going to create your account, right? Just put the order in, essentially. So we're going to create the account. We're going to follow our funding plan of, of we're going to we're going to work on we're going to do from the top down we're going to focus on putting this together putting this together putting this together and putting this together okay and if they tell me like for example if they say oh yeah i've got some cash i've got some credit i've got you know and and then I, i'll have to find out about these things one thing i'll do is, is say all right so step three is to unlock your education and if we've already chosen uga and I say, so the goal um, is obviously to get the most we can towards this on either cash credit, 401k, you know, private, whatever. But the nice thing is I can, I can create the account and we can unlock education with a minimum of 4,000 down. And this is if UGA Right. If they're not going to use UGA, I do not say this. Okay. So if UGA, that's the key here. And so I say with a minimum of 4,000 down, I can actually unlock your, your education. So, so if you've got this now, when we create the account, let's go ahead and just unlock your education with the cash or credit that you already have. And you can start watching today and go through and figure out, you know, the rest of these things that, that, uh, that we're going to do. And then we can always go back and then change this later on, but you'll be able to start watching classes. And so uh, if, if we can, we'll put that in now. Um, but if not, then I just say, cool, let's go find it. And then step four, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna set goals. And, and I go right back to the top and say, we will line out a goal structure of you know the things that we want, yes, but the more important thing is going to be your due date. Okay, so we will set goals based on the number you shared with me, eight to 10 hours per week. And I'm gonna use the lower end of that. Anything above that is extra credit. You'll just get done faster, but we'll set your due dates of what do you do on Monday? What do you do on Tuesday? What do you do on Wednesday? What do you do on Thursday? What do you do on Friday, Saturday? Okay, what do you do each day of the week towards reaching your goals? And you will have a template of of what you do in these three categories every single week. And I say, fair enough, great. And then I, I pop over here, I open up my internet and I click on this button right here on the top left, education order entry, I've got a favorite. So I click that button and I put their order in, bam, just like that. This has been working for me almost flawlessly when I sit down with people and do this with them. I get, I get an order almost every single time, whether they, and it's funny because some of the people end up not even going for it, that's okay. But I still got them to take some action. And, and some of the people obviously go for it. Put their cards in, we put their credit in, just because now they know how, they know how to do it. So anyway, if I, uh, I probably, I, I bumped over here, I saw tons of questions. Um, oh, da, 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 da. oh, a bunch of thank yous. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What is in it for me? Yep, exactly, Tyler. Da, 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 da. Cool. Well, everybody, happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Be grateful. Say the words investing in real estate to everyone you meet. Somehow, somewhere, sneak it in there. Even if you just change the subject in the middle of any conversation, just say the words investing in real estate. See where it goes. Whether you're, whether you're in phase one or you're in phase two, doesn't matter. You will find what they are. Whether, they're a pa whether their interest is passive, active, they have a property for sale or they're just plain old not interested, but, but, but of the mindset that's going to make a real estate investor rich. Yeah. So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope this was valuable and I will see you all in a week.